Welcome back to my channel. This is part two of my home buying series where I go in depth on each part of the home buying process that I've experienced myself, not only as a home buyer, but also as an agent. So let's get into today's topic. Today I wanna to talk about creating your non-negotiables and starting to look for a home. The reason why having a non-negotiable list is so important is because when you go to purchase anything, and let's say it's a car and you walk into the dealership and there are thousands of cars available if you do not have a list of things that you walked in there for you will walk out with a brand new car that you have no idea how you're going to make the payments for because some salesman was so good at selling you on the fact that you needed to purchase this brand new vehicle it's the same way with homes so having a list of non-negotiables is, is really helpful to stick to what it is that you came into this process for. If you are purchasing your first home, I wouldn't make it an extravagant list be, unless you have saved up or unless you have waited to a point where you're like, okay, I want this dream home. Um, because essentially most of the time, our first home is never really our dream home. It's usually just something to get our foot in the door and to start building some equity because we know that in the future we will have uh, the money saved up to go and get our dream home or we can add our first home into a, a portfolio or whatever you want to do with it but essentially the moral of the story is that our first home is never really our dream home so let's say let's stick with the example of the first time home buyer if you're a first time home buyer you aren't going to necessarily want things such as fully renovated bathrooms or marble floors across throughout the house like these sort of things are typically when you are purchasing your second or third home. Um, however, for a first home, for example, um, a good non-negotiable list would be, you know, a two-car garage. That's very doable for a first-time home buyer. Natural lighting, that's something that was really important to me. Open concept. A lot of people like the idea of an open concept just simply because maybe the kitchen being closed off isn't family oriented enough for them and they want to be able to see their family while they're cooking. A basement. This is pretty common in the state of Georgia. So if you're in a state where basements are not common, maybe having it on your list of non-negotiables might not be the best idea because then you'd be struggling to find that home with a basement, let's say in Florida. I would even go as far as you doing a ranking system for your non-negotiables. For example, if the most important thing to you is an open concept, then make that number one and make sure that that's the first thing that you cross off your list when you are looking at properties. I like to have this list with me when I go view properties because this way you can visually put together your list and the home that you're viewing and you can even keep a note. For example, if you're viewing 10 properties in one weekend, it's hard to remember which homes really stood out because at the end of the day, they could all end up looking the same. So having this list for each property that you view is really important to help you understand which property you truly want to purchase at the end of the day because it was able to fit all of your non-negotiables. Another great reason why having this list is so important is so that when you go into a showing with your agent, it won't be able to sell you on something that you didn't want to buy. So keep that in mind. If you share this list with your agent and they're showing you things that do not even meet 50% of your items on the list, this is not the agent that you wanna be with. You wanna be with someone that took the time to really understand your list and rank your, your priorities and show you homes so that it's neither a waste of your time nor a waste of their time. This list is also really great for when you're online shopping for homes. I know a lot of the times our schedules don't really allow for us to go view every single property that comes across our plate. For example, if you have Zillow notifications set up and you see a home that you think looks amazing, um, but you won't be able to see it until the weekend, this is something where having this list could be really important to determine how badly do you really want this house. So going through your list and going through the listing on Zillow, for example, you'll be able to cross off your non-negotiables and say, okay, this house has nine out of 10 of my non-negotiables. I wanna go ahead and set up a showing ASAP before any of the hedge funds or before someone else comes in and makes an offer, sometimes even a blind offer. And this way it creates a sense of urgency for yourself to make sure that you're not missing out on some great opportunities by having this list. Let's say you didn't have this list and you saw a great home on Zillow. 
and you went to go view it and you realize that, okay, one, it doesn't have anything on my list that I've wanted or it's nothing like I thought it was because, you know, the photos were great, but then I get there and it's just, it's, it's not that, you know, the lighting is fake or something like that. Just think of those sort of scenarios. Basically understand that having this list is so important to sticking to what it is that you came in to buy. Going back to the car dealership example, let's say you walked into the car dealership and you had a list of everything that you wanted on this list. A salesman will not be able to sell you a car that does not fit what you came in to buy. Don't forget to include your price as well because this is really important. If you do not want to pay more than $1,700 a month, let's say, for mortgage and utilities, use Zillow's calculator to determine whether or not this home will ever reach that number. Yes, the numbers are a bit speculative because you're not really sure on the lender side of things what's going to be the outcome. However, you can get a good idea as to how much this home will cost you and add that to the last point of your non-negotiables and keep it in the back of your mind whenever an agent is like, hey, I found this great property for you. I think it's you know in a great location. It has everything on your list, but it's about $400 over your desired budget. No. So keep that in mind. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to share it with someone who's looking to purchase a home or if you're looking to purchase a home yourself, I hope you found this useful. Thank you.